Peter Tatchell, my next guest, has been a most influential man in the affairs of the British. So, oh, there he is, trying to perform a citizen's arrest on Robert Mugabe. That's something any man should be proud of. Uh, most of what he says these days sounds like conventional wisdom, but it wasn't when he arrived in London from Melbourne all those years ago, and he helped make it conventional. I disagree with him on all manner of things, but if you're a betting man, put your money on Peter, because things are far more likely to go his way than mine. In the UK, that is. Abroad, it's tougher sledding. Peter's just back from Qatar, where he organized that country's first LGBT demo. That's consistent with what Peter Tatchell has believed all his life. Other people, one notices, are not quite so consistent. The same people who would boot you off the BBC if you express, say, a mild antipathy to same-sex marriage, are happy to dispatch their top sporting correspondents to Qatar as if it's perfectly normal for the world's best football to be played in a country where homosexuality is punishable by up to three years in jail, or if you're Muslim, execution. Gee, it's almost as if no one cares about the homophobia as long as you write a big enough check. Qatar isn't a footballing nation. There's no Wembley Stadium, so they've had to build them from scratch using foreign slave labor. But like I said, their check's clear, so the world looks away. Qatar putting the Q into LGBTQ, <laughs> Peter. Uh, are you looking forward to the World Cup after your time over there? Well, I think the World Cup should have never been given to Qatar, mm. given its appalling human rights record. When FIFA granted Qatar the World Cup, they said it would be an agent for change, that this would be a motor for progress. But in the 12 years since, there's not been a single reform on women's rights or LGBT plus mm. rights. Mm. There have been some improvements for migrant workers, but still migrant workers today complain of unpaid wages, mm. of often being forced to live in overcrowded slum hostels, and being denied permission to change jobs to escape abusive employers. Right. So not much change there. Well, and, and on top of that, at least according to the fellows at The Guardian, thousands of, of them have died in the course of building this stadium. About six and a half thousand. Yeah. And many of the families of the deceased workers are still to this day awaiting compensation. Hmm. Uh, it doesn't seem to matter to FIFA, though. It's just like, as, as I said, this isn't a footballing country. It's not like Cameroon or whatever. It's, it's just somebody who, that's bought its way into the big leagues because it's flush for entirely different reasons. Absolutely. It's, mm. it's money talks. Mm. I mean, there are allegations that the decision to grant Qatar the World Cup was corruptly achieved through bribes. Right. I can't prove that, but there's a, some considerable evidence and some people certainly believe it. Um, right now, of course, FIFA is bending over backwards to be nice to Qatar and to try and bat away any criticism. In fact, it's just recently said, let's focus on the football, not human rights. <laughs> well, the, the pushback <laughs> against you is very interesting to me because they say, and, and again, you know, uh, one has a decent respect for the opinions of mankind. It's no surprise to anybody uh, that Islam isn't cool with homosexuality. That's true. In or women. Or women. Or women. Yeah, no, and that's, uh, that's also equally true. Um, but I noticed the arguments being made against, oh, yes, oh, yes, uh, yes, the Qatar criminal code says if you're Muslim, they're going to cut your head off for homosexuality. But actually, they haven't done that. There's no record of anyone being executed for it. So how do you respond to something like that? Well, how would any of us feel mm. living in a regime where that was on the statute books, mm. where potentially you could be executed for loving a person of the same sex. Mm. And we wouldn't find that acceptable. And it does strike a sort of culture of fear and anxiety in Muslim Qataris. Mm. They never know for certain just how safe they will be. And of course, leaving aside the uh, threat of execution, um, there is still the threat of imprisonment. Yep. Three years uh, for consenting adult same-sex behavior up to seven years if it's deemed to be an honor crime. Mm. And of course, Qatar also has secret gay conversion centers 
where LGBT plus people can be detained against their will and subjected to abusive attempts to turn them straight. Yeah. I know one young gay man who was put in one of these centres. He described it as a form of religious and psychological brainwashing. Mm. He was so traumatised by the experience that some time later he killed himself. That's well, just how bad it is in Qatar. Well, you know, if, you, if, they, if instead of opening it in Qatar, they'd uh, opened it in uh, Cleethorpes or Carrick Fergus, all, everybody here would be up in arms. But somehow it doesn't count when it's the World Cup uh, halfway around the planet. You see, regardless of where the World Cup is held, sport is supposed to be an equal playing field mm. based on merit mm. without discrimination. And in fact, FIFA says in its own rules and recent statements, discrimination during the World Cup will not be tolerated. There's a zero toleration of discrimination. Yet there are seven countries, including Qatar, which currently have a total criminalization of same-sex relations, mm. with, in many cases, um, several years or more imprisonment, and in some cases, even potential death penalty. Well, now, now, just think, yeah. if a star footballer from any of those seven countries, including mm. Qatar, came out as gay or was known to be gay, they would be more likely to be arrested and jailed than selected for their national team to play in the World Cup. And that's discrimination. It's against FIFA's rules, but FIFA is looking the other way. Well, just on that, uh, just to go back to your citizen's arrest on Robert Mugabe, when there's an African country that does this, kind of like the uh, Uganda, which, uh, which became very fiercely homophobic. And uh, I think the, uh, the, guy, the, the way he put it, he said, why can't we go back to the old days when these types were speared by their relatives? Everyone's happy to beat up on those countries because they're inconsequential in the world. They're poor. They're basket cases. A lot of these Muslim countries have the money to silence the criticism. Well... That is certainly the case. And you've probably just heard the recent reports mm. that Qatar is buying the loyalty and support mm. of football fans. It's offering them free flights, mm. free tickets, free accommodation and £60 a day in spending money. <laughs> and in return, they are required to sing the praises of Qatar, uh. to wave flags and sing songs on command and to use their social media to rebut Qatar's critics. I mean, this is an abuse no, of no. power. And, you know, to use money to buy loyalty in that way, just, it just, shows how desperate the regime is and how they know they are in a very bad state in terms of public opinion. Just, just, remember, just remember what Peter was saying. They'll pay you to go to this thing and give you 60, whatever it is, 60 quid a quid day uh, spending money. So, like... Any gay activist watching, you should book your seats there, open a, 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 a gay pop-up bar in Qatar because, uh, well, you know, it's like uh, trying to look for a decent gay bar in Riyadh or Jalalabad. It's pretty fruitless, but if you all take the Qatar government up on their offer, you could make it the gayest World Cup yet. Thank you very much, <laughs> Peter Tatchell. Stop